Hi, everyone. Welcome to Every Day, your daily stop for virtual reality content. I am D, and today is a technical episode. We're going to be diving in to the Oculus Rift Dev Kit 1, and in particular, the distortion shader. What is it? How does it work? Why is it important? What happens if you don't use it? And how do they make it go fast? First of all, if you've watched my YouTube videos or other Oculus Rift YouTube videos, you've probably seen um, images like this. So what you're seeing here is literally the same image that appears on the LCD screen inside the Rift, but it's not what you see when you're wearing the Rift on your head. And the reason for that um, is that the Rift has lenses inside it. And the lenses change that image so that it fills up your field of view and you look around and everything straight straight lines look straight your view is covered in it everything looks normal sized there's no apparent distortion in your view as you look around it's just like looking around in real life so the question is then why did they shape the image like this on the screen what purpose does that serve and the short answer is that the lenses cause distortion of the image on the screen and the distortion of the image cancels that out and makes it so that you can view it normally. Now we're going to get into some of the details of how that happens. The first question we need to answer is why are there lenses in the Rift? What are they doing there? Do we have to have lenses in the Rift? This is a diagram from the Oculus Rift uh, SDK documentation. And the letter X indicates the size of the actual LCD screen inside, in, inside the Rift, half its width from the center of the lens over to the edge of the, of the screen. And the letter X prime on the right indicates the size of the virtual screen that you see because you're looking at the screen through that lens. Because the lens bends the light, you think you're looking at something much larger inside the Rift than that display. So the cool thing is you get this very large virtual display that covers a large portion of your field of view. And at the same time, you have a device that's not enormous, that you can move your head around easily. It's not too heavy. It's not hard to produce. But the downside of this is that as the image moves through this lens, it introduces distortion. And I'm going to show you exactly what that distortion looks like to somebody who's wearing the Rift. Here is a simple rendering of a 3D scene from two different viewpoints. There's no distortion being introduced here. And as you can see, when you look at the screen, straight lines stay straight. There's perspective distortion in objects that are nearby, but that's acceptable. The important thing is that we're not seeing any kind of lines becoming curved. We're not seeing any warping or changing in the aspect ratio of objects. Here is a simulation that I created that shows you pretty much exactly what it would look like if you were looking at that image through the lenses in the Oculus Rift. Notice that as rectangular objects approach the corner of the frame, the corner of the objects stretch outwards towards the corner and the lines start to curve. And as objects appro approach the top and bottom of the frame, they also stretch out and their aspect ratio changes. And if you play for any length of time with a uh, with a game that has this kind of rendering, it would become extremely disorienting. Now, I was just showing you the central part of the view, the part that you can see inside the Oculus Rift. If we zoom out, we can see what the entire image looks like when it has been warped by the pincushion transform that is performed by the lens. Now, you wouldn't normally be able to see this entire image, but every pixel from the source image is in this transformed image. As you can see, there's some dramatic distortion of some of the source pixels, especially near the far corners. You can also see here that the corners on the far left and the far right, so the left two from your left eye and the right two from your right eye, are more distorted than the ones near the center. And the reason for that is um, because the center of the lenses are not precisely in the center of, um, of, the of the left and right halves of the screen. They're actually a little bit closer to the center. 
And that has to do with the fact that the lenses separation is determined by the average distance between people's eyes and not by the size of the screens. So let's look at that pincushion distortion in a little bit more detail. So here, the original image, the source image that was rendered, the rectangular image is on the left. And we superimposed on it this bullseye of concentric circles that are separated by a constant distance. When you look at that through the lens, the effect is a radial distortion in which the circles are mapped onto circles. They remain circles, but the circles are spread out. And the circles get more and more spread out as you move from the center of the lens outwards. If you inspect the images carefully, you can see that each of the corresponding circles crosses the same objects in the image at the same positions. So for example, if you look at the fifth circle from the center, um, counting outwards from the inside, you'll see that it crosses the corner of the painting in the upper right. And it does that in both images. Now suppose that we want to eliminate this distortion. How do we do that? So the short answer is, we want the image on the right to not be this crazy distorted image. We want it to actually be the image on the left. So the way we do that is we just move the image on the left over to the right, get rid of that distorted image. And now we're going to figure out what image we need to put on the left to get that image on the right. We're going to go ahead and zoom in to get a closer look. Now going in the opposite direction, instead of expanding the circles into larger circles, we have to compress the circles closer together. When we do that, the result is this image, the familiar barrel distorted image, so-called because when you compress a rectangle in this manner, the result is shaped like a barrel. Just like before, if you count out any number of rings. For example, if we look at the fourth ring and we look in the upper right, you can see that it crosses the painting at exactly the same points in both images. Any two points you examine on the two images will have this same property that they'll match up on corresponding circles. Unfortunately, by doing this, we've created a new problem, which is that when we compress the circles, we also shrunk the image. We now have less pixels than we started with. Say we were starting with an image that looked like this and totally filled the LCD of the Oculus Rift, and then we compressed it with the barrel distortion. The result would look like this. We've now got a ton of black space all over the image, and this is actually a real problem, because if your eyes are close up against the lenses, you're going to be able to look to all four sides and actually see that black space. It's going to limit your field of view, and it's going to limit the immersion of the device. So what we really want is we want to fill in that black space with the models that should be in that position, like this. The question is, how do we do that? The simplest way to do it is to simply take the source image that we created the barrel distorted image from and make it bigger. When we say make it bigger, we mean two things here. We are rendering a higher resolution image. That means we're rendering this to a temporary buffer that's actually higher resolution than the screen of the Oculus Rift. And additionally, we're increasing the field of view. And the end result will be, when we compress it down, we'll get an image that's large enough to fill the entire display. So remember in the beginning, when we talked about how the lens creates a virtual display that's effectively larger than the physical display. So one way that you can look at the barrel distortion is that we're taking the very high resolution virtual image on the right, which is stored in a memory buffer, and we're rendering it directly to the very large virtual screen that you see when you look through the lens. By using the barrel compression, we can fit it on the smaller physical screen. But the downside of this is that we're also representing it using less pixels. That means that although the center of the screen is using about the same amount of pixels as before, the edges of the screen have been, are using a lot less pixels per angle of degree. And so you're going to lose a lot of fidelity in those regions. And we get away with this because most of the time when you're in the rift, you're looking straight ahead or somewhere near a straight ahead. You're not usually swinging your eyes in your sockets to look at the very edge of the screen. 
And although that region is important for your peripheral vision and your sense of immersion, you don't need to see so much detail in that region because that portion of your eye that you're usually looking at it with, your peripheral vision, is lower resolution anyway. So now comes the final step, which is how do we efficiently take a source image, a rectangular image, and produce a barrel distorted image? And the answer is surprisingly simple. First of all, we're going to take advantage of the GPU to do this, because the GPU has a very large number of independent processors. And then, among those processors, we're going to divide up the pixels of the target image. Now, say that we're one of those processors, and we've just been assigned one of the pixels to look at, the pixel that this arrow is pointing at. Now, we know that pixel is on the fourth circle from the center, and we know the direction we have to go from the center to get to it. So to figure out what color that pixel needs to be, we go in exactly the same direction from the center of the source image that's stored in memory, and we go out to the corresponding circle, which is farther out than it is in, in the target image that we're rendering now. And effectively, what this means is that we're scaling that vector by some fixed constant factor. And to determine what that factor is, there's a simple formula that takes r, the length of the vector, or the radius, that we go out from the center, and then we multiply our vector by this factor to scale it out to its new place. Now we figured out where in the source image we need to copy the pixel from to get the right pixel for the target image. And we just copy it over, and then we're done. By parallelizing this among the very large number of processors in the GPU, we can quickly accomplish this for every pixel in the image, and then we have our distorted image. This kind of highly parallelized GPU process is called a shader, and we can do it quickly enough that it's only a small percentage of the rendering time associated with each frame. So that's what barrel distortion is all about, and it's really a key to how the Rift works. The fact that you can combine the hardware of the lenses with the software of the barrel distortion, which runs extremely quickly, and the end result is that you end up with a virtual screen that's much larger than the physical screen, and a physical screen that's small enough to be practical for a head-worn device. Now, there were some details that I skipped in that discussion, like, for example, how do you figure out exactly what your field of view needs to be? How do you figure out exactly where the center of the lenses are in your images? How do you treat the left eye and the right eye differently? And if you want to know more, I recommend you go read the Oculus SDK documentation. You'll be pretty well prepared for it now. And I hope this has been helpful. And everybody have a great every day.